Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this tutorial, we'll take the Fast API application we developed in the last video and deploy it as a container on AWS. GitHub links will be in the description. Before we dive into the code, let's set up our AWS credentials. We'll need an account with the AWS console, an IAM role with CLI access, and we'll need to install the AWS CLI version 2. Head over to the management console and create an account if you haven't already. After logging in, visit the IAM portal and create a new user with admin permissions and programmatic access. After you do so, export the credentials to a safe place to be referenced when setting up the AWS CLI. To install the AWS CLI, use the download links provided on their official documentation. Once installed, open your terminal and run AWS Configure. You'll enter the credentials from the IAM user where appropriate and set your region to whichever region you'll, you'll be deploying to. Clone the Fast API demo repository from my GitHub. We'll be using this as the starting place for our deployment. We're going to add a Docker file that's suitable for production, upgrade our Uvicorn server with GUnicorn, and add a deployment script. Add a dockerfile.prod file to the project folder and copy the contents from the existing Docker file. Here, we'll add a command at the end of the file to start the application with GUnicorn. Update the requirements.txt file and add GUnicorn. In your AWS console, navigate to ECR, or Elastic Container Registry. Here we'll create a new registry for our Fast API container images. In the root of the project, add a file called deploy.sh. This script will use the CLI we set up earlier, so those who aren't authenticated won't be able to use this script. You'll want to update the variables with your specific account information. Once finished, execute the script from your terminal to build and push the image to ECR. The cloud architecture will consist of a PostgreSQL database for storage, an ECS cluster to orchestrate our containers, and an application load balancer to direct traffic to the containers. First, we'll create the load balancer. In the AWS Management Console, navigate to EC2. Click Load Balancers on the sidebar and create a new application load balancer. This should be internet-facing, IPv4 protocol, ports on HTTP port 80, using the default VPC, and two available subnets. Additionally, we'll need to configure a security group that allows inbound HTTP access and inbound SSH access to our application load balancer. Finally, we'll need to configure routing to our API container. This will be on port 8000, and we can use the health check route we set up earlier at forward slash health. Next, we'll provision our relational database and security group. In the AWS Management Console, 
navigate to EC2 in one tab and RDS in another. In the EC2 tab, click Security Groups on the sidebar and create a new security group. This will have inbound HTTP access on port 80, inbound SSH access from your IP address, and inbound access from the Application Load Balancer security group. In the RDS tab, click Databases on the sidebar and create a new database. We'll use the PostgreSQL engine, a free tier database, and we'll update the instance identifier, master username, auto-generate a password, select the security group we just created, turn off public accessibility, and we'll select a subnet that's synonymous with our application load balancer. You'll also want to name the initial database instance, so here I named it Project. Once created, you'll need to take note of the password and the production URI to the database. We'll need this later as an environment variable and in our limbic.init file to update our database migrations path. Next, we'll configure a task definition along with the cluster and service within Elastic Container Service. Navigate to ECS and create a new task definition to define our container. Please note in this recording, I forgot to tag the image when I pass it into the container here. It should have a colon dev at the end of that image. Here's where you would add your database URL as an environment variable. Let's move on to the cluster. This is where the actual containers run. I'll define a new API cluster and assign T2 micro instances and create four of them. I'll also create a new key pair that I need to use later in order to SSH into the EC2 instances. Now we can create the service to instantiate our container using the task definition that we created earlier. Here we'll want to be sure to add our application load balancer and direct traffic on port 8000. Once created, we can check out the status of our container by looking at the target groups in EC2. It looks like there were some unhealthy targets. This is likely because the health check is being called from the same security group as the application load balancer. We'll need to update this security group to allow inbound access from itself. Once the targets drain and restart, they should be healthy. Once you have a healthy target, you can visit the load balancer and paste the DNS into a new browser tab. The 
final step is to SSH into the server where our API container is hosted and run database migrations. Using the SSH key generated when creating the ECS cluster, SSH into one of the EC2 instances. There, we'll run Docker PS to grab our container ID and we'll bash into the container to run our migration command. By visiting the docs page on our API, we can now create and get a list of movies. That wraps up this video on deploying a fast API application to AWS. Thanks for watching.